I've been using a new bow build for the last few weeks and I've been having so much fun with it that I've forgotten to upload any new videos to my channel. I figured that's probably a good indicator that this build would make for a great new video. So what's this new build all about and why would I take this one over any other build possible? So many reasons I don't even know where to begin. Let's start with the big picture. First of all, this build gives you consistently high damage precision strikes from a relatively safe distance. Number two, it has added defense just in case you do manage to get hit. Third, it has para and sleep functionality for more control of the monster. And number four, it works against all monsters and doesn't rely on specific shot type or element matchups to be successful. This new build allows me the freedom to just grab it and go, no matter what the quest is, and do an incredible amount of damage while playing at a relaxed, comfortable pace. In short, this is easy mode for the bow. How did I manage to achieve this blissfully deadly build? It all starts with the bow itself. The Royal Order bow has plus 50 defense built in. That's like getting a 7 or 8% boost to defense, which is the difference between a one-shot and you staying in the fight. The bow also has 10% affinity naturally, which might not sound like much on its own, but if you think about it, it's equivalent to the two level 2 deco slots you'd need to achieve that through armor skills. I've augmented the Rampage deco slot to accommodate the Kashala deco, so that's another 15% affinity. When these two affinity bonuses combine with the armor skill bonuses that you'll see in just a minute, you'll have 100% crit for most of your quest. This bow is pretty awesome. It has wrapped up shot type for all the charge levels, which means I get that much more damage when using the shoot to charge method. I'm not using Adrenaline Rush or Blade Scale Hone to boost the damage on this set because those rely on frequent use of counters to activate. For this build, I opted to maximize my damage through passive bonuses, so I'd be under no pressure to play in a risky way. On top of all this, it's got paralysis coatings and sleep coatings. These are great for multiplayer because controlling the monster means everybody gets higher DPS. Add a few traps, hunting helpers, and carefully timed flash bombs into the mix. And you're not only doing the highest damage percent in the group, but you're also doing the most support in the group. This type of thing is very possible with the Royal Order Bow, and it's another reason why I love the simplicity of this build and play style. You can do some seriously high damage to every monster, as well as taking advantage of all the fun ways Capcom gives us to dominate the quest. Let's take a look at the critical armor skills on my build. First, we've got Bubbly Dance 3, Resuscitate 3, and Coalescence 3. This combo gives you Constitution 2, Evade Window 2, Attack plus 38, Element Attack plus 4, Status Build Up plus 15%, just from evading a few times. You should have near 100% uptime on this. The Coalescence will trigger when you get bumped or when Bubbly wears off naturally. The second set of skills is Crit Boost 3 and Weakness Exploit 3. This is critical for people who like to hit weak spots, which I suggest that you do in this game. The Weakness Exploit combines with other affinity bonuses on this build to give you a 100% critical hit on weak spots. And for those shots, the critical boost will give you an effective 15% boost to damage. It's hard to beat this combination. Third, Wrap It Up 3. This is something like 20% damage to your rapid shot type. There are very few scenarios where shot type up isn't part of a bow build. Ballistics 3. This is the secret sauce of all my builds. This extends the critical distance for your shots. Not only does this allow you more flexibility in your positioning for safety and more consistent DPS, but it also makes the switch skill Bolt Boost very usable. Bolt Boost enables super critical distance, and Ballistics allows you to maintain super crit easily. Super crit is something like 12 to 15% damage boost. I'm not exactly sure, but it's ridiculously good. Next, we have Critical Eye. There are a lot of ways to raise your affinity in this game, and often all you need is one to three points of Critical Eye in order to max out your affinity at 100%. For most melee weapons, as well as bow guns, I suggest Maximum Might instead. But for bow, which uses stamina, Critical Eye is the skill of choice for squeezing out that last 5 or 10% affinity that you need. Bloodlust. 
This is a great skill to have on pretty much any build. It's gonna trigger coalescence, but more importantly, when it kicks in, it's gonna give you a boost to attack, element, and status, increase your evade window, reduce your stamina use, and when you overcome the bloodlust, it's gonna give you 20% affinity and recover your red health bar. Reload speed two. For bows that have multiple coatings, this makes your transition so smooth and allows you to maintain your highest charge level seamlessly across your coating changes. It's two level one slots, so it's trivial to add to your sets now. Bow charge plus, most bow builds will require this, but not all. Royal order bow definitely needs bow charge plus to max out your charge level and your damage. Flinch free one, I always have this when playing online. It's gonna keep gunners and other bow users from staggering you out of your charge level and combos. Burst, if you can get it, it adds a few more points of damage to each arrow and is often a bonus skill on armor builds. I like the new name for this skill. It used to be called Chain Crit, which made no sense based on what the skill actually does, so I'm glad they changed the name. So when you go to build your own version of this set, any other skills you get on your build is gravy. Often you can get some really cool extra skills like Windproof 3, which you don't really notice until you no longer have it. So what playstyle do I use with this bow build? First of all, the food skills. For any quest on regular maps, I eat bird collar, fighter, then booster using a ticket and skewers. Bird collar makes maxing out your petal ace trivial. And so I quickly gather birds on my way to the monster, easily maxing out my health and stamina meters. For maps with a prism, spear bird, I'll eat booster, fighter, and feet marksman. Once I reach the monster, I'll play medium to medium long range due to the ballistics. I also play bolt boost due to the ballistics, which I can keep near 100% uptime on and I can stay in super crit. I love sniping monsters with this shot type. Sure, it's only four arrows, but you can hit all four arrows on the same spot from a ridiculously safe range. I use dodgeball for mobility because I'm used to it, but the build is by no means dependent on it. My red scroll has absolute power shot and focus shot. Blue scroll has power shot and aerial aim. I have stake thrust on both scrolls, which I use for all the special coatings. I've also got Herculean jaw on the blue scroll, which I can keep close to 100% uptime on as well. Now I'll typically start on the red scroll, and use absolute power shot until I get the first KO. For afflicted monsters, this takes a bit of time and a second KO is probably not gonna happen for me from arrows alone. This is where the thunder beetle comes in. I use it after the first KO because the second KO is much harder to get from just arrows. My dog has a para weapon. So at some point after I get the first para with my coatings and after it's worn off, of course, I'll empty the rest of my coatings and let my dog finish up the second para. I'll do the same thing with my sleep coatings because when I'm playing multiplayer, there's almost always someone who brought a buddy with a sleep weapon, so two sleeps is not uncommon at all. I use traps liberally and combo them on the fly. A well-timed trap will make a huge difference in your quest times. So that's the build in a nutshell. I definitely recommend this to any new bow users and anyone who wants to take a step back from all the high pressure, high risk play styles and builds that are circulating out there. You can take this build to any matchup and feel safe enough that you're not going to triple cart and confident enough that you're doing an amazing amount of damage. I didn't present this as a template build for various reasons, which I'll talk about in another video. And surprisingly enough, with all the changes that Title Update 2 brings, this build that I just showed you isn't even fully optimized. I'll show you the crazy augmentations I did to it to make it even better than I could have ever imagined. Stay tuned for that one too. Let me know in the comments what you think of this build. Tell me how you would customize it for your playstyle. Subscribe to the channel and come check us out on the Discord. And I'll see you in the next video.